What's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on with hypothesis testing. We're now going to talk about acceptance versus rejection regions. And so we're going to start getting a little bit more specific now with hypothesis testing. Not full on technical yet, but definitely not as high level as we've been before, sort of in the middle. So I want to introduce a scenario here. Let's say that the average price of a home in a country is believed to be 400000 and a researcher comes along and claims that this is false. So from this information here, what is the null hypothesis? What is the accepted truth so far? Well, that the average price of a home, right? Let's uh, characterize it by this mu symbol here, is 400,000 in the population, so in this country that we are looking at. And then a researcher claims that this is false, so they're coming up with an alternative hypothesis saying that, no, you know what? I don't believe that the average price of a home in this country is 400,000 anymore. It's not going to be 400,000. And for this example here, I want us to assume that in the population, Let's say that there's 100,000 homes, right? So a good amount of homes, and we don't have the resources to go to all 100,000 homes and then value them and get that average price. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take a sample and see if we could come up with conclusions from the sample about the population. So now, if there's 100,000 homes in the population, by the central limit theorem, the homes should start taking a normal distribution. And if the average price of the home is in fact 400,000, right, that null hypothesis, then that would be in the middle. So I'm going to just put 400 there. That's going to be in thousands. So that's 400,000, right? Because the average in a normal distribution is always in the middle. So what's going to happen is we're going to go in, we're going to take a sample, and then we're going to get a sample mean, right? So let's say that um, from different samples, we maybe get a mean of 400 and 10,000, right? So whenever we take a sample, the mean is never going to really be or very rarely, it's going to be exactly that hypothesized value of 400,000, right? It's going to deviate from it a little because we're not taking the full 100,000 homes. We're taking a sample from that. So let's say one sample, it's 410. Maybe let's say another sample is 370,000. Let's say another sample, maybe it's a little bit more of a deviation let's say the sample mean would be 500,000. And so here's the question to ask ourselves. When is the difference between that null hypothesis, right, that hypothesized value of the average of the population and the sample mean right? The average of the sample that we take, whether that's 10 homes, whether that's a thousand homes, whatever, large enough. When is that difference uh, large enough for us to claim, or actually let's keep it a little more uh, in stats like language. So large enough for us to reject the no hypothesis? That's the question that we're answering with hypothesis testing. When is the difference between that hypothesized value of the average of the population, 400,000, and the sample mean that we get large enough for us to reject the null, right? So is it at 410? Is it at 370? Is it at 500? Let's say we take the largest one. So the largest deviation is 500,000. Right? We took a sample, we took a bunch of homes, the average of them was 500,000, and maybe from that sample we could say, hey, it, 
that's too big of a difference from what is the currently accepted truth of 400,000. And so we would reject the null then. But what if that 500,000, what if that's only a sample of 10 homes? What if you only sample 10 homes? That's not a pretty big representation of 100,000, right? 10 out of 100,000, that's kind of a small sample to be working with and to be confident enough to reject that null hypothesis. What if there's a sampling bias in your sample? So let's say that maybe you went and looked at homes in a more rich area, right? So obviously the average of that sample is going to be a little bit higher. Right? So it's kind of subjective. There's a lot of factors to consider. When do we actually feel confident enough to reject that null hypothesis? And so what hypothesis testing does is it takes away all of that subjectivity and it makes it objective. And it actually gives us, I'm going to erase these over here. It actually gives us objective criteria it gives us boundaries, right? So it might give us boundaries there. And these boundaries here, they're called the critical values. Right? And in this video, we're not gonna go into detail on how to calculate these critical values, but there is a way to calculate them. And we'll cover that in future videos, but that's what hypothesis testing is doing, is it's taking all the factors into account. So for example, like the sample size, and it's giving you critical values. So you can know if, let's draw a line here, draw a line there. And so if your sample mean falls in between those critical values, then over here, we continue to accept the null hypothesis. So this area over here, it's called the acceptance region. Or you might uh, see this being called a region of non-rejection, right? Acceptance, non-rejection, same thing. But if your sample mean falls outside of these critical values, so either somewhere over here or over here, then this is called the rejection region. We're going to be rejecting the, um, the null hypothesis then, because that difference is going to be too large from that hypothesized value of the null hypothesis, 400,000. Right? And then uh, this rejection region, sometimes it's also called the critical region, right? Critical region, rejection region, both of those mean the same thing. Now, as I mentioned, there's actual ways, there's technical ways to calculate these critical values. But let's say for this example, we know how to calculate them and we get 350 over here and then 450 over here. So that's our critical values. Let's assume that for this example. And so, when you take a sample mean, let's say we take a sample and the mean is 380. Well, that's going to be over here, right? So that's 380. Notice how that's within that acceptance region. And so it's not large enough of a difference from 400,000. And so what we would conclude with that is that there's not enough evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis continues to be the accepted truth. But let's pretend that we had a different example and um, we got a sample mean and it was 500,000, which would be out here, right? That would be 500,000. Well, notice that's in the rejection region. So we would then reject this null. We have enough evidence for us to be confident enough that this null is no longer true. 
Okay. Now, one thing I want to mention is that when you see these kind of diagrams in most textbooks, uh, when you have like an acceptance region, when you have a rejection region, they're not going to be in the units that you're working with. So notice that we're working with dollars in this case, right? Because we're looking at the average price of a home. So this 350,000, that's in dollars, 380, 400, 450, 500. All of that, sort of the axis, is in dollar terms. But what actually happens in hypothesis testing, let me draw another distribution here, is that these values here, whatever units you're working with, they actually get converted either to a standard normal distribution or a T distribution, depending on the sample size, the degrees of freedom, like we went over in confidence intervals. There's actually more distributions that we're going to look at too, F distributions, etc. But let's just stick to the two we know for now, normal and T distributions. So these values, they actually get converted during hypothesis testing to certain Z scores or T scores. And so we know that with a standard, let's just uh, talk about the normal distribution. T distribution follows this same shape, but I'm just going to be mentioning the normal for this example. Um, we know that the middle of a standard normal distribution, the average, is zero. So it's like we took this 400,000 and converted it to zero. There's actually a way to do that. And so these critical values would get converted to certain Z scores on the standard normal distribution as well. So let's say that, um, again, there's an actual way to do this, but let's say that this 350, let's say that that gets converted to a Z score of negative 1.5. And then this 450 gets converted to a Z score of positive 1.5. Right, so these here, this is the average, these are the uh, critical values. And this is how the distributions in most textbooks are shown. So this is the uh, acceptance region over here, based on either a standard normal distribution or a T distribution. We're gonna be working with both in the future. And then these here, same thing they are the rejection regions. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna take your sample mean, let's say our sample mean was 380, and you're gonna to have to convert that to either a Z score or a T score, right? So this 380, if we convert it, let's say that that converts to like negative 0.9, right? When we take that and we convert it, or this 500,000, if we convert that to a Z score or T score, let's say that it ends up being, um, let's say 2.1. Right, so exact same thing, exact same intuition. This negative 0.9 is within the critical value, so we accept the null in that case. And then this 2.1, it's in the rejection region. So we would reject the null in that case. And actually, when you convert these sample means, so I'm gonna write that here, just because you're gonna see this definition come up. When you take the sample mean, and you, um, let's not put an arrow, let's say we convert either to a Z or a T score, Right, and it could be any other distribution as well, but again, I'm just talking about the Z distribution, T distribution. When you take that mean and you convert it to a certain Z score or a T score, um, this here is called a test statistic. Right, so when you see this definition, come up when you see your prof talking about it or a textbook talking about it. Sometimes students get confused with this. It's basically taking that sample mean that you have and then converting it to 
whatever distribution you're working with, whether that's a Z distribution, T distribution, F distribution, whatever it is. And that's how hypothesis testing works. Again, still from a high level, we're gonna get more and more technical, but as you probably notice, as the videos have gone along in the chapter, we've gotten more and more specific. But we're gonna be doing a bunch of different kinds of hypothesis testing. So notice in this example, we were looking at one population and we were testing its mean. But we're gonna be doing testing sometimes on two different populations and testing the difference in the means or the difference in the variances. Uh, another difference is that Notice in this example, there was two rejection regions or two critical values. So this is called a two-tail test, but we're gonna also be doing examples where there's gonna be one critical value or one rejection region. And sometimes that may be on the left side, sometimes that may be on the right side, and that's called a one-tail test. But no matter what kind of hypothesis testing we're gonna be doing, the intuition of what I just went over in this video is gonna be the same. You're going to have critical values, you're going to have an acceptance region where we don't reject the null, you're going to have a rejection region where we do reject the null hypothesis. But again, we will cross those bridges once we get there. Now what I want to go over in the next couple of videos is certain factors that affect the size of this acceptance region or the size of this rejection region. Right. So as the acceptance region gets larger, the rejection region will get smaller, or um, vice versa, if the rejection region gets larger, then that acceptance region is going to get smaller, right? Another way to look at it is the location of where the critical values are. So certain factors I wanna discuss, one of them I talked about in this video, the sample size, but I'm gonna discuss a bunch more as well.